you want the truth, well, here's the wicked truth. We back, man. Wicked Truth TV. Yeah, I got yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sit, 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 sit. Sit. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't get a chance to introduce. <laughs> what is that in your hands, that? I can change the colors of the back. Man, if you touch face. that background, if, after we don't sit here, sit there, if you if you change that background, I'm putting you up out of here. I'm telling you that we, right we now. Could, we could cut it on. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who gave him this remote. Well, whoever gave him this remote, man, you know you don't block out. <laughs> Got two of these. We had a light fun up in here today. You know Stack I mean? man, tell them who we got with us today, man. Man, we got Mr. Coo up in this building here. The last day, let me cut you. Let me cut you. Let me cut you. Let me cut you. Let me cut uh, you. Uh, I told you you address a legend like a legend. Uh, it's not we got Mr. Coo up in here. Well, today. No, always, we got the legendary. How I taught you what oh, you wanted oh, me oh, last oh, night. Let me do it over. I just want to say this. Before. <laughs> he said, "Let me cut you." <laughs> I said, look, we all bleed the same, but we cut different. <laughs> but anyway, look here, we got the legendary Mr. Coop. Mr. Born Threat Mr. himself. Mr. Born Threat himself. You ain't do nothing in front of me last night. We, we, I went, what meeting? <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah, I was looking at, oh, I was looking at Will of Man, ATL, man, we got my boy, man, my longtime pop, yes, man. Yes, me yes. and the man go back over 30 years together. Yes, yes, yes. You know right. what I'm saying? Mr. Cool, man. Yes, yes. The original born threat. Cool was had. What's up, bro? What's going on? Man, What's up, man. Stat? Man. Yeah, man, you already know what it is, man. You know me. Don't speak to him. Don't be nice to him, Cool. Don't be nice to him, man. Don't be nice to him, man. I've been knowing him since about seven, eight grade. Stat, you ain't know that? The man don't know, didn't know you from Adam. He walked right past you to me. What's up, man? He said, to how you been knowing him? I've been knowing him when we used to call him Just Threat, my dude. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Just Threat. I knew. I've been knowing him. He was that boy at Threat when he came around my way. You need to hear him just Amen. tell me so that I can move. Yeah, no, you, you got to same week. Watch out. I'm, I'm going in. Hey, we all gangster because we got on black shirts. <laughs> Man, What's up, cool. though, man? What's going oh, man. on, man? I like the show and shit, man. Yeah, you know man, what I mean? You know, I've been man. checking for y'all already. I already know, and I appreciate that. You know, I, I, and I said to myself, you know what I'm saying? I'm going down and listen. I said, man, who haven't I really got? And I said, I'm tripping. I got to have a nigga that we started together with. Yeah, right. My first tracks came from Cool. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Big R.P. Bird. You know yeah, what I'm right. saying? Yeah, right, man, right. My first stuff came yeah. from. So I said, man, yeah. I'm tra- I couldn't believe I had never had you on the show. So I'm going to tell you right now, man, I'm sending all the brace to you, man. You come back on the show anytime, anytime. that you man, want to. appreciate that, bro. You know what I'm saying? This yeah. ain't a one-time deal. You come over here, man, anytime you got something to say. That's right. That's right. Now, uh, I want to get into just, you know, right off the rip, but you know, my show cool. It ain't really about just music or, you right. know, I, I was talking more, you know, more about personal That's so right. people can kind of, right. you know, know who Mr. Cool yeah, is. Like what's you know your favorite saying? ice cream? Yeah, yeah, what, no what, what, yeah, what pushes your buttons? What motivates yeah. you every day? Yeah. You know, so we're going to get into a little bit of the music, but yeah. we gonna, we want to get into the, to the man himself. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Cause you're you're a legend out here in these streets. Believe you know. It. So my you know my first my first song, which everybody been man, you gotta have Mr. Coop out born to What was he doing at the time? Was he robbing folks? Was he <laughs> killing folks? You know we. You know I said I said look I said man, cool and cool man. He's approachable. People think you're not approachable because the right. song's so hard. Yeah, right. But you know right. take us through man that song man where you was in your life at that particular time and why that song came off so hard like it did. It was, uh, I guess it's like on the political side of it, I was starting to become aware like what I was up against and and then started just thinking about like how they really felt about black people, you know what I mean? Mainly black men. So somewhere in there, I just decided I was going to personify, you know, all the worst shit you can think about. Me. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, Since, right. Since I'm a natural born threat, right, 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 just by being born, right, you know what I mean. Right, I see, and I never looked at it like that. Just by being born, I'm a natural born threat okay, to you. Okay. You know what I mean. Yeah. So it's like this on that same token, becoming aware and thinking about all that. I was just like, I'm, I, I'm gonna personify all the worstest things you can think that I am. Right. You know what I mean. Right. And I'm gonna be that. I'm gonna be that for you. Right. You know what I mean. I'm right. gonna be that just for you. Just so when you hear the song. Yeah, I want you to hear the song and be like, what the hell? But when black people hear the song, it has the opposite effect. Right. You right, feel me? Right. <laughs> when right. black people hear the song, they get turned. 
They okay. get motivated. Okay. They right. get crunk. They start feeling smart and inspirational. Right. You feel me? Right. Opposed to the ops here, the song is start feeling frightful right. and fearful. And <laughs> what the hell is this? You feel right. me? So. Right. Now, did, did you did you do did you do that track too? Because for for all y'all that don't know out here, you have done tracks for some everybody, and I'm gonna get into that. Yeah. Uh, but did you do that particular track also? Yes. Me and my uh, me and my brother. Shout out to DJ Black Charm. Me and my brother. What's happening? Yeah. And I called. Uh, and it's funny because at the time when we was making beats and stuff. We didn't really understand MIDI and all of that. Right. So when I made Born Thread, it's like I laid the drum track and then we played all the pieces all the way down the beat live. You feel me? My dad came in and played on it too. Shout out to Pops, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Some generations on that thing. Yeah. So it was like, it was one of those things where we didn't really understand MIDI. So when we played the beat all the way down and then just listened to it in the studio playing back, I was just like, man, this the beat. You right, feel me? Right. It's him. Right. And yeah. Right. So that's you, how that came to life. You, um, you are a you are a producer. A lot of people uh, in the streets, especially this industry here in Atlanta, mm -hmm. they know you for, you know, DJing. They know you for for your tracks and stuff. Uh, when you started, cool. Did you want to be a rapper, or did you want to be a producer first? What's your first love? Is it the rapping part of it, or is it the producing part of it? I think it was the production. For me, because it was like when I was young, man, I put a drum machine on layaway. You feel me? <laughs> that drum machine was like four hundred and eighty dollars. Right, at that's that, a lot. At that age, yeah. it's it, it seemed like I never <laughs> yeah, yeah. get this much money. You feel? I was like twelve. Right, right. But at the same time, I was making twenty five dollars every Sunday at church, and right. then that school niggas were paying me to do their homework and draw <laughs> and draw on their shirts and their pants and all of this. You know what I mean? Because right. on the other side of it, I was just always a whiz kid. You right. feel me? Right. That was born in the ghetto. You know what right. I mean? So it was like shit. Both I carried both sides of it. You know what I mean? Both okay. sides of the torch. Because I wanted to carry the intellect at the same time. I understood my environment, so niggas had to know shit. We ain't nothing to play with either. You right, know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So it was one of those kind of things. But it was like, man, when I was 12 and I got that drum machine, I, I dropped money off every weekend. I think I, when I got the $400, I still owed the rest. And the white dude was just like, man, you been on it, man. I'm, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> right. He said, I'm going to go on and let you leave with it. Right. I said, you for real? He said, yeah, I'm going to give you these little speakers. You can plug into it and everything. You feel me? Right. So, Man, I was on that bus, bro. I don't know where I was. Right. I think I got on the train and went the wrong direction three times, just on my headphones, just on the drum pad. Bro, I looked wow, up, it's man. dark. I was like, what am I gonna kick my ass? You feel me? Right. Right. For real, but it was like, that's. I think it was more production for me. Cause it was like, once I got that drum machine, that's all I thought about was being able to create. And then rapping kind of came naturally with me and my brothers and all of us, you know what I mean? So when we did start rapping and they was like, bro, uh, you remember True It? True, True to yeah, It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True To It, who started the management with me. But the other side of that, me and True To It kind of kicked it around in the streets. Mm -hmm, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So when we was riding one day, taking care of our little biz or whatever, True was just like, man, I'm finna go meet my brother out here. At uh, Andre Rising House, yeah. he said they be shout they Dre. yeah. Shout out to Dre, shout out to uh, Mark Truitt too. Mm -hmm. So he was like, but they be doing the whole music thing. Right. So I was like, damn. He was like, yeah, I'm, I gotta find me somebody. Cause I'm finna get in on this music scene. Right. Why is young? You right. feel me? Right. So I'm riding with him. I was like, what if I I told you I know somebody that can rap and make their own beats? He was like, shit. Let me hit the little nigga. Right. You feel me? I was like, shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you the nigga tape tomorrow. Right. So I gave him the tape. You right, feel me? Right. You I actually you. left the tape in the mailbox. You feel me? <laughs> right. and, and then hit the road and went back up the road from where I was trapping at. You know what I mean? Because right. I was out there on the outskirts. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, but while I was out there on the outskirts, it was like a couple of the people from the truck like, man, um, Truett keep calling you. Truett keep calling you. You feel me? Right. So I finally got on the phone like, what's up, bro? Like, you know what I mean? Why the hell everybody keeps... He's right. like, who the hell this nigga is on the tape? We got to pick him up. Right. You feel me? Right. I said, man... I'll be down the road tomorrow, you feel me? <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, we got right. in the car, he was like, man, where the nigga at? Let's pull up on him now. Bro, you're like, I said, you're man, you're riding with him, man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he he said, it. man, hell no. Nah. I said, I'm telling you, bro, you're riding with him. You're you riding with him, yeah. yeah. So he was like, damn. 
Bro, why you ain't tell me? I'm like, shit, I just go to the studio, yeah. do my thing. Me yeah. and my brother be making beats and shit. You feel me? Shout out to uh, Donnell, because Donnell set up Ghetto Lab for me and Charm. Mm -hmm. He basically throwed us in a room full of equipment that we had never saw before. Right. But we was wow. on it in 90 days. Everything was plugged up working. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it was like, yeah. On yeah. Yeah, so it was yeah. like, that's how that whole thing had rolled out, man. And then uh, once I got with Mill, then Mill introduced me to KV, them and Drew BMK. Uh -huh. You feel me? That's mm -hmm. when that whole relationship started. Uh -huh. And when we was in the studio, V was just like, man, me and him both like this the song you feel and, and that's what I want and I want to get into that wow. next with that uh with the whole uh that was that was you did you had Rico mm -hmm. you had uh Raymond right big yeah. play right yeah uh yeah <laughs> Dini yeah you know what I'm saying I, I, I don't yeah, know yeah. What, are they still Brian, all on the streets Brian Mack Brian Mack are they yeah. still? um it's funny you say that because it's like you want the truth well here's the wicked truth